Hi everybody, some people wanted a reminder about how to deal with images, so I'm going to walk you through the whole process of finding an image and downloading it and modifying it in a paint program, um, and then how you can actually load that image within your Java programs and display them using processing. So here we are, uh, I'm going to search for hats, and here I am in the images. Um, I'm going to select this one because I want to illustrate what happens if you want to uh, take out sub images from a larger image? So I'm going to right click here uh, and I'm going to say copy image. You could also save it to your hard drive if you wanted to. I recommend as a paint program, if you don't have one that's your favorite, uh, using something called paint.net. Um, and that's already installed on the school computers. So paint.net looks like this when you open it. And if you've already copied an image, you can paste it, and it will ask you if you want to expand your canvas. So here are the hats. Um, let's like grab some of them. So if you've used something like Photoshop before, it's got all of the regular kind of tools you might expect. If you haven't, you can sort of figure out your way just by tinkering, which I think is a great way to do it, but I'll also show you some things. So there's several different ways of making selections of different shapes. Um, I'm going to copy this, and then I'm going to hit Control N for a new uh, a new picture and it will create one that's the right size for whatever's in my buffer. So now I've got a picture that's like just this hat. I want it to have a transparent background so I'm going to select this tool which is the magic wands tool and it will try and select colors that are close in color to whatever I click. So here because the hat is white and the background is white uh, really it's just cutting everything except for this hat band but if I drag the tolerance down, great. So now I've only selected the white of the background and not the white of the hat. And if I hit the delete key, now I've got a nice transparent background. Cool, so I'm ready to save this. So I'm gonna to go to save as. Now you need to actually put this in a folder that is a subfolder inside your project. So you have to remember where's your workspace and where's your project. Um, mine's in a different space than yours. Uh, I think I remember where mine was. Um, so yours is probably in C drive, users, and then your username, and then Eclipse Workspace. Uh, mine is here. So once you're inside your project, mine is called Image Examples, yours is called whatever yours is called, um, you should see some folders. You should just go ahead and create a new folder called Assets, or you could call it Pictures or whatever you want, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to call this hat1.png. And now I've saved it. If you, if you want a transparent background, PNG is a good one to use. Um, let's do the same process for one more of the hats. So I'm going to get this nice polka dot hat. Cool. Copy. New. OK. Paste. Magic wand. Uh, cool. So I didn't get the whole, uh, I didn't get the whole background. So you could do it in two steps where you hit delete and then select the next one, or I could hold the control key to add to my selection. So now I've selected everything and I can hit delete. Let's save this. Uh, I'm still in the assets folder and I'll call this hat2.png, great. Okay, so that process is now done. So here I am back inside Eclipse and you might notice that inside uh, image examples I don't have an assets folder and you might think what is happening. What's happening is that Eclipse does not automatically refresh. So you got to click the, your top level folder, right click it, and then say refresh, and now I see assets. And if I want to look at them, I can double click, and what will happen? Oh, it opens back up in paint.net. Okay, cool. Um, so there's, there's hat one, hat two. All right, so let's talk about loading these things. There were several steps to loading an image. First is we have to create a p image variable. Um, so I'll call this hat1 and hat2. So I've actually created two pimage variables. You have to import pimage. Um, if you haven't currently included core.jar in your build path and you're not extending papplet, like probably you're not set up to do this. Um, so, so here I've got my two image objects. Well, I don't have the objects yet. I have variables that could be holding the objects. I have to actually load the objects. So the way you do that is you say, what was it? Create. Hold on, I forgot. Okay, so it's called load image. Oops. So load image, and then you have to give it the name of the file you're trying to load. Um, more than just the name of the file, as we'll see in just a second. So here's hat1.png, and then inside draw, let me draw a background so that uh, 
will refresh every time. And then assuming that this loads correctly, which is probably not going to, um, I can actually display it by saying image, and then I tell it the x, y location where I want it to display, and I give it the actual p image that I want to display like that. What's the problem? Oh, the p image goes first, okay. So p image first, and then the locations. So let's like fix all the various things that are gonna go wrong um, so that you can sort of see what it looks like when they go wrong and, and know what the problem is. So when I try and run the program, okay, so the first thing that happens, you see nothing's displaying, but we also see this runtime error down here. So if you scroll to the top of the, the console window, it says the file hat1.png is missing or inaccessible. So what that means is it can't find hat1.png. Because you and I know that it's here inside the assets folder, but how does the computer know where it is? Like for all the computer knows, maybe it's inside the source folder or, or just like straight in your desktop or somewhere else. So you can't just give it the file name, you have to give it what's called a full path name, which is a text way of describing what folders to look in in order to find hat one. So I'll show you two ways to do this. Um, your Java code is running from inside a particular folder. Um, most likely it's running straight from inside, uh, well, I, saw, I thought I saw a bin folder. So I think inside your project folder, there's a folder called bin that stands for binaries, and that's, that's where your project's running from. So if I have dot dot slash assets slash, let me tell you what that's doing. Dot dot means start in the folder that you are currently running the code in, and then dot dot means go up from there. So if we're currently running from a folder called bin, and we go up from the bin folder, now we're inside image examples. And then assets means go inside the assets folder, and then there's hat1.png. Let's see if this works. Okay, great, there's the hat. Um, if that doesn't work for you, it probably means that you're not actually running your code from inside the bin folder. Um, a different thing you can do is uh, give, give a path that describes the sequence of folders starting with your hard drive. So here's something you can do for sure. If you uh, click on hat1.png and right click and go to properties, here it'll tell you the location of the file. So you can just copy that whole location. Will this button copy it? No. Um, so you copy that location and that's the location you want to use as your string. Um, and so now if I run it, cool, you'll see it still worked. So that's two different ways of describing to the computer the location of the image that you're trying to load. Okay, let's fix a couple of things. So you might notice that the hat is larger than you want it to be. Um, one thing you can do is you can say hat1.resize and you can make it a different size. So if I wanted to make it like 50 by 50 pixels, great, now the hat is much smaller. Um, you might notice that it's kind, kind of gotten squished because the original image wasn't square, it was rectangular, but here I'm just forcing it to be rectangular. So what you need to do instead is you need to figure out if you were going to scale the whole image down by like 50% or something, what would the width and height end up being? So in order to know that, you have to know the size of your original image. Um, if you double click on hat1.png, it should open it in, hopefully in paid.net, you see here at the bottom it says 349 by 204. That's the current width and height of the image. So what I could do is I could get a calculator and I could say, all right, uh, let's see, so 349 times 20%. So that would be like about 70 pixels. And 204 times 20% would be about 41 pixels. So let's rescale it to 70 by 41. Uh, let's close this, so here's 70, here's 41. And now the hat is smaller, but hasn't been, uh, hasn't been squooshed. Now, depending on your particular game, you probably don't want a bunch of images just sitting in your main game class. Remember what we did with T-Rex Runner. With T-Rex Runner, um, we had a different object, like we had the T-Rex object. And then when you made the T-Rex object, you'd say like T-Rex equals new T-Rex. And one of the inputs for the T-Rex was the name of the file that is the image for the T-Rex. So you'd pass that into the constructor and then you do all this load image stuff inside the T-Rex constructor. So you might wanna do that also with your program. I mean, obviously not T-Rex, but some other kind of object. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful.